Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss further other comprehensive income. What is other comprehensive income? It refers to certain financial transactions that bypass. They are not recorded. They skip the income statement. Notice their income. So you think there should be on the income statement. Not at all. They skip the income statement, which typically include revenues, expenses, gains, and losses. So other comprehensive income is none of those. Instead, these items are, are recorded directly into with an equity next to retained earnings. So they're separate item on the equity statement. OCI is important because it reflects the financial effect of certain transaction as an event that the income statement don't capture. It's not listed on the income statement. So if you want to have a comprehensive view of income and losses, well, you have to look at other comprehensive income. Now, the name other comprehensive income is misleading because sometimes you could have other comprehensive losses. Never the fact it's either other comprehensive income slash losses. Items are stored eventually in accumulated other comprehensive income, AOCI. Analysts and investors should look at these items because they reflect company's performance not shown in net income. Therefore, if you want to really understand the changes in equity from non-owner's activity, you have to look at those other comprehensive income. In this session, what we will do is we would look at the tax effect of the OCI, other comprehensive income items, and we would look at their disclosure. In prior session, we looked at OCI, but let's look at it from a different perspective. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. Let's first review what are the components of other comprehensive income, what items are listed under other comprehensive income. The first one is unrealized gains and losses from available for sale securities. Those securities could be stocks, could be bonds, and we are holding them. And because we have to report them at fair market value, we either have a gain or a loss. Any unrealized gain or loss is reported in OCI. They are not reported in net income due to the fluctuation in market value until they are sold. These unrealized hold, holding gain or loss are noted in OCI. That's one item, one of four. This is what goes under OCI. Another item is foreign currency translation adjustment. So when a company has operating divisions in foreign companies. They operate in foreign companies. Those statements are in foreign currencies when they are initially generated. But when they are consolidated, when they are combined with the U.S. entities, let's assume it's a U.S. entity, the amount must be translated into U.S. dollar. Well, because we're translating a foreign currency to the U.S. dollar, we might have an exchange gain or a loss. Those are recorded in OCI. This is item two. The third item are hedging derivatives. When a company uses derivatives instrument to hedge its exposure to fluctuation in interest rate or foreign currency or other market risk, the effective portion of the gain or loss on these hedging instrument is also reported in OCI until the hedged items affects earning. Again, we're talking about here about cash flow hedge. Just know certain hedging items are also reported there. Now, you don't have to know specifically what these are for now, but we're going to cover each one of them separately in a separate recording because we need to talk about unrealized gain or loss, foreign currency translation, hedging activities, as well as pension plan adjustments. When a company has a defined benefit pension plan, they need to calculate the cost of the plan. So any difference between the projected performance of the pension plan asset and the actual performance which is, could be a loss or a gain, will be recorded in OCI. Also, when you have a pension plan, you have something called actuarial adjustment or actuarial changes that changes from year to year. Those changes could be income, could be a loss. Those are also reported 
at least initially in OCI. Now you have to understand all these items are initially recorded in OCI. Eventually they will make it to the income statement. They get reclassified, each one of them and under a separate scenario. Now let's talk about presentation for tax purposes. How, we, how can you present those items? Here's what you can do. You can present those items all together, then multiply them by the tax rate and show them net of tax, whether that's a tax expense, if it's an, in, if it's an income or tax benefit, if we overall we have a loss. When would we do that? We will do that if they all have the same tax rate. That's not usually the case. But for simplicity, we can show it this way. Or we can show each item separately net of tax. So we will show the item, compute its tax effect, whether that's a tax expense. So if it's a gain, it's going to be a tax expense. If it's a loss, it's going to be a tax benefit. So we will show it at its tax, either expense or benefit. Now let's assume you don't know net of tax concept. So let me work a quick example to show you the income tax expense and the income tax benefit. Let's assume we have a company that has the following financial items for a particular year. Net income of a million, unrealized gain on available for sale investment of 200,000, foreign currency translation loss of 50,000. Let's assume the tax rate for this particular company is 25%. Now, we have to report those figures net of tax. Well, how does that work? Well, we have a gain of 200,000 on the unrealized gain. Well, what does that mean? If we have 200,000, we're going to have to pay 25% in taxes. It means our tax bill is 50,000. Therefore, the gross amount is 200,000 minus 50,000 of taxes. The amount net of tax is 150. Therefore, the unrealized gain net of tax is 150. And this is what we mean by net of tax. This is net of tax expense. The 50,000 is an expense because we have a gain, we have an income. Now let's look at the foreign currency translation loss. Loss, on the other hand, will give you a tax benefit because loss is a, from a tax perspective, is a deduction. What does that mean? It means because you have a loss of 50,000 that reduced your taxable income by 50,000 times the tax rate. Well, 50,000 deduction times the tax rate of 25% this $50,000 loss gave you a benefit of $12,500. Therefore, if you have a loss of $50,000, if you add the benefit to it, $12,500, your loss will be $37,500. Therefore, this is your loss net of tax. It means it helped you. It helped reduce your loss. What helped reduce your loss? The fact that you're going to be getting a deduction of 50,000, which in turn will give you a tax benefit, which in turn will offset the loss. Therefore, 50,000 negative minus minus the tax, which is minus minus will be a plus, equal to 37,500. We call this 37,500, your loss net of tax. Therefore, your total OCI net of tax overall, 150 plus, this is net of tax, plus negative 37,500 also, this is net of tax. They're both net of tax, will give us a total of 112,500 net of tax. I just don't, I cannot assume you know this. Other tax consideration we need to be aware of, reporting the tax effect of item recognized in OCI required the company to record the, the present before tax amount, the amount of tax expense or tax benefit and the net tax amount. And this is what I showed you here. You can either show it this way, the gross amount, the taxes, the net of tax, or you can show it net of tax. And obviously when you show it net of tax, you have to disclose how you came up with this number. These requirements ensure that financial statement user can see the impact of the tax on these items. Why? Because you want to see when you are paying the taxes in which jurisdiction, and you want to separate the taxes for different transaction. Taxes for operating income should be totally different from taxes on unrealized holding gain or losses. So in comparing the financial statement of entities in different tax jurisdiction, that's important, and understanding the tax implication of the items reported in OCI. Now, the aggregate amount of income tax relating to each item of OCI should be presented either in the 
statements itself or in the notes of the financial statements. So that takes us to the disclosure. Companies disclose their accounting policies related to taxes on OCI in the footnotes. They will explain this, including applicable tax rate. We could have many tax rates because those items, especially foreign currency adjustments, they could be related to foreign foreign countries, different tax rate, any tax credits or incentive being utilized. Also, we need to provide a reconciliation showing the relationship between the tax expense or income, which is tax benefit, and the items of OCI, or explanation of significant difference between the tax expense and the tax effect of OCI. So we have to show in details whether it's the tax expense or the tax benefit and show a reconciliation between the gross amount and the net amount. Also, the tax effect on each of the four items, some will be tax benefit, some will, will be a tax expense, will be presented clearly on the face of the financial statements or in the notes. And this is basically what we are, what I just said. It's either on the face or in the note. On the face means on the financial statements, you will show the gross amount, the tax rate, the tax effect, or in the, in the notes, you will show it a little bit more in details. So you'll have a detailed explanation. How about interim financial reporting? Do you have to show comprehensive income? And the answer is yes. Entities are required to report comprehensive income in the interim financial statements. This can be presented either as a single continuous statement of comprehensive income or in two separate but consecutive statements. Same thing as year end, same exact thing as year end, beginning with the statement displaying the component of net income, starting with net income, and you keep going. It's also it's essential for entities to make sure that their interim financial statement provide a view of the company's financial position performance cash flow that's consistent with the information provided in the annual and that's why comprehensive income it's part of the annual should be part of the quarterly this includes presenting comprehensive income to give this the shareholders an understanding of all the changes in equity arising from profit or loss now this is what a note would look like uh, explaining all the changes. For example, here we have a statement of changes on other comprehensive income, the beginning balances of unrealized holding gain or loss for AFS, pension plan, foreign currency translation adjustment. This is the beginning balance. Then we show the current change, the current year changes. For example, the unrealized holding gain or loss, we had a gain. Then this year we have an additional gain, no reclassification. The ending balance is 1,150. Same thing with pension. We started with the loss. We have a gain for the current year, then we have reclassification from OCI. Now, if you don't know what reclassification are, reclassifications are items that affected the pension plan or affected this item in the past, but we decided to put it in OCI, then release that effect gradually. For example, here, we could have in losses. For example, we could have $20,000 in losses. And every year, we are releasing $50 to the income statement. Those losses are in AOCI, and now they are being reclassified or amortized to the account and reducing the account. Therefore, we had negative 200 plus 100 minus 100. We still have a pension plan, a loss of 150. This should be in parentheses. Same thing with foreign currency translation. Again, then for this year, we have a loss, no, no adjustment. Then we have an overall again, and these are the total balances. Now, these ending balances he, right here, they all go on the statements of stockholders equity. We can show them separately or we can show this amount regardless. Usually we show them separately just along with retained earnings. Amount are shown here are net of tax. Everything is shown net of tax. And that net of tax will be explained either on the face or the notes in the financial statement. And if these disclosure, these re reclassification will need any disclosure, we will perform those disclosure. Bear in mind too, the current year changes too, we might have to disclose how we came up with those current year changes. Let's take a look at a multiple choice question from Farhat Lectures. What is the ending balance in other comprehensive income for XYZ company? Well, we have a bunch of transaction. We have unrealized gain on available for sale securities at the beginning of the year is a million. Unrealized loss on cash flow hedges at the beginning of the year, 200,000. Foreign currency translation adjustment at the beginning of the year, half a million. Then we are giving current year changes. Well, we have unrealized gain on AFC, 
AFS security is 150. So we started with a million for available for sale and we added 150. Therefore, available for sale security is ending should be 1,150. Unrealized loss started at 200,000. Then we have a cash flow hedge. It's an adjustment of 100,000. Therefore, it doesn't show a loss. It shows, you know, cash flow hedge. Now we are down to 100,000 of a cash flow hedge. The foreign currency we started at the beginning of the year, a gain of 500,000, and we have a loss of 50. The, the overall is the overall ending balance is 450,000. Now what we need to do, we need to go ahead and do what? And net these numbers out to find out what's ending comprehensive income. So if we take negative 100,000, this is be this will be 350 350 plus 1 million 150 will be C 1.5 million. Now in this question I did I did not really trick you much because what I can do in this question I can give you items that they are not OCI. Every item here I give it to you as OCI. So you have to be careful. If an item is not OCI, you have to know which one is OCI, which not which one is not OCI. If it's not OCI, don't include this computation. This is how they try to trick you on the exam. And be careful whether I'm starting with a loss. For example, under the cash flow hedge, I'm starting with a loss. Then there was a gain. Then I, I, I did end up with a loss, but be careful about the negative loss. What should you do now? You got to go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional MCQs. That's going to help you to prepare for the CPA exam your, or CMA or whatever exam you are studying for. Invest in yourself. Your your certification is 20, 30 year investment in your career. Don't shortchange yourself. Work hard now so you will reap the reward later. Good luck. Study hard. And of course, stay safe.